Hi, for this video, we will be discussing settling chambers. So this is the second out of three parts of the lecture on sedimentation. First, let's discuss the principles of settling chambers. A settling chamber is a large box through which an effluent gas flows and in which particles in the stream settle to the floor by gravity. So in this case, you can see here, um, these are the particles that are being separated from the gas here. Gas velocities are kept low by increasing the ducting into the chamber that are large enough so that particles settle sufficiently. Practical limitations on its length limits its applications to particles of 50 microns or larger. In this case, settling chambers are usually used to remove large or basically the abrasive ones prior to the particle collection devices. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the settling chambers? Basically, they're simple and easy to construct. And of course, the cost is low. There's a small pressure drop. Collection of particles without water is possible. No moving parts, few maintenance requirements. It is reliable and not subject to abrasion and provides incidental cooling of the gas stream. Whereas it might require a large space as one of the disadvantages and relatively low particulate matter collection efficiencies. That's why this is usually done before the air pollution control devices, the dust collectors. So particles will stay in settling chamber in the time period called the residence time, which is given by T sub R is equal to the length all over U, where U is the horizontal velocity of the flowing gas. Whereas the time period called collection time or T sub C is equal to H over VT, height over the VT. So, so basically here, you have U and V. They are vo both velocities. However, the other one is the settling velocity, whereas the other one is the horizontal velocity of the flowing gas. Theoretically, the T sub R should be greater than or equal to T sub C, of course. Otherwise, you won't be expecting any collection. So the residence time in the chamber should be bigger than the collection time. Or worst case, it's equal. So for an acceptable performance, V sub T should be greater than 10 centimeters per second, which corresponds to about 50 microns for low density particles and 10 microns for high density particles. However, the U bar or the horizontal velocity should be less than 3 meters per second, the other one centimeters, with VT should be less than 0 0.3 meters per second. So let's go to the definition of the collection efficiency. Collection efficiency here is 1 minus the number of particles of diameter per meter cube of gas out all over the number of particles of diameter dp per meter cube of gas in. And the overall efficiency is 1 minus the number of particles per cubic meters of gas out all over the number of particles per cubic meters of gas in. So take note, this is an example. You can see here that the velocity in the middle is the highest. And then um, due to, of course, due to the friction of the walls, it becomes lower as it goes to the walls. So again, for laminar flow or plug flow settling chambers, the efficiency is the residence time divided by the collection time. The residence time is given by L over U bar. All over the collection time is given by H over VT. So rearranging the equation, this would be equal to Vt L all over U bar H, where Vt is, of course, the terminal velocity in the Stokes Law region. So we have learned this formula in the previous lesson, where dp is the diameter of the particle, g is the acceleration due to gravity, density of the particle minus the density of the fluid all over 18 times the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. So that is equal to the terminal velocity. So for mixed flow settling chamber in the turbulent region, the efficiency is 1 minus E 
raised to the negative v t l all over u h. So this model is realistic as the efficiency approaches 100% as the diameter increases. So let's try solving some examples. In this example, consider a settling chamber for which the height is 0.1 meters and 10 meters long at 298 Kelvin. The horizontal velocity of the airstream is 0.1 meters per second and the density of the particle is 1 gram per cm cube on the average. Determine the collection efficiency for a particle diameter of letter A, 2 microns, B, 5 microns, and C, at what particle will all be collected? So basically, that's efficiency is equal to 100% or 1. And then you're also given that at 298 Kelvin, the kinematic viscosity of air is 0 0.15 centimeters squared per second, and that the dynamic viscosity is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 grams per centimeter second. So let's try solving. So the given, given that at temperature is equal to 298 Kelvin, the length of the chamber is 10 meters, and that the height is 0 0.1 meters. What else is given? So the kinematic viscosity of air is 0 0.15, and then the dynamic viscosity is 1.8. Kinematic viscosity, 0 0.15 centimeters square per second. The dynamic viscosity is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 grams per centimeter second. What else is given? The density of the particle is 1 gram per cm cube. So the density. So what's being asked? We are required to solve for the efficiency of collection at 2 microns at 5 microns. So A, efficiency at diameter of 2 microns. Letter B, the efficiency at diameter of the particle. 5 microns, and lastly, at what particle diameter will all be collected? So, the particle diameter at collection efficiency of 1. Let's just draw. So, this is um, an example where here you have u, and then this is the, that one there is your height. So, you're given a height of 0 0.1 meters, and then this one here. This is given to be the length, which is 10 meters. The horizontal velocity of the stream is 0 0.1 meters per second. So that's given also. Right. So in order to solve for this, let's first try to check what region does this happen. So let's go to the solution. Let's first solve for the Reynolds number. Reynolds number, that's D. V rho over mu. The V here is a velocity. Also, you have to take note that density is equal to the ratio between the dynamic viscosity and the kinematic viscosity. So let's solve this to, all, to know all the parts. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 grams per cm second. And then at the bottom, that is 0 0.15 centimeters square per second. So with this, we can solve 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 grams per cm cube or 1.2 kilograms per cubic meters. Now, the formula for Reynolds number is dv rho over mu or actually when we try to get the relationships between uh, the kinematic and dynamic viscosity, we can also say this is d u bar over the kinematic viscosity. So with this, we can basically just plug in the formula. This one is the diameter of the pipe, which is 0 0.1. And that is 0 0.1 meters per second. And then the mu is 0 
centimeter squared per second and then let's just correct this 100 cm for every one meter square when we calculate this one gives us 666.67 so that's the reynolds number and since the reynolds number is less than 1100 we can say that this is laminar so since this is laminar let's try solving for the efficiencies going to the formula where efficiency is equal to the residence time over the collection time where this one is the velocity t l all over u bar and h so for this we can see that the settling velocity we can use the formula g dp squared density of the particle minus density of the fluid all over 18 mu and then let's just separate l u bar and h so with that let's plug in the values 9.81 times dp i don't know the dp yet let's just leave that as dp because we're substituting in letter a that's two and then in letter b that is five density of the particle is given to be 1000 grams per cm so that's 1000 minus the density of the fluid is given to be 1.2 above all over 18 times mu which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 grams per cm second so let us correct this to be kilograms and meters so that one divided by 1000 and then this one multiplied by 100 and then the length is given to be 10 the velocity is 0 0.1 and then the height is 0 0.1 so for efficiency, we'll have here 3.024 times 10 to the 10 dp squared. So we, ha we have here a, a relationship. So given that relationship, let's just copy it here. Efficiency is 3.024 times 10 to the 10 dp squared. Let's substitute letter A. When the diameter of the particle is 2 microns, so substituting, plugging in the values, the efficiency would be 0 0.12096, so 12% efficient. Whereas for letter B, when the diameter is equal to 5 microns, the efficiency would then be 0. 756 so plugging everything here in the equation on top and lastly you're asked to solve for the dp when the efficiency is equal to one so 100 percent efficient so at 100 percent efficiency the dp so plug in one in here divided by 3.024 times 10 to the 10 and then getting the square root that gives us 5.75 microns so these are the answers i hope you understand thank you very much